Maker. Welcome to Buckhead Church, to our podcast. Welcome, um, welcome to our people. Uh, you know, we've been saying over and over again, I feel like every church has, but you know, the church is not a building, the church is a group of people, yeah. but gosh, this whole thing has really made us realize that. So we feel it very connected really to you. Has. Thanks for being a voice in our church. How are you doing? Well, I am delighted to not be there with you, but to be here with you from my office. Um, how are we doing? You know, you and I were just talking a minute ago. We both have five kids and it is a lot of human bodies in one place without any <laughs> reprieve. And so ours are, we're north of you a little bit. You know, yeah. we've got two in college mm-hmm. and we have two in high school and one in middle. Okay. And of those five, two of them are seniors. So I have a senior in college and I have a senior in high school. And so we're uh, managing some real disappointment. Totally. In the house and some real discouragement and they're not getting to finish strong like they wanted to mm-hmm. and hoped to. And um, and so it just I feel like I have a different answer to that question by the hour. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. some days I am like, it's go time. Like we're this is the hat maker crew. <laughs> this is what we do. Like we rally. We are strong. And other days I'm like face down on a plate of nachos. Like. <laughs> This is, we're all just going to die here, I guess. Like, this is it. This is how it goes down for us. <laughs> well, I love that. I mean, I think what you're saying is what every, I can't say what everyone is experiencing, but I think a lot of people really are experiencing. So too. There's a lot of good stuff. And then there's a lot yeah. of really hard stuff and it's all happening at the same time. Right. Which I don't know what to do with that other than. Right. It just is. It's kind of like life and it's just been put in a pressure cooker because at all times we are all managing joy and pain. We are all managing hope and discouragement, but now it's like, it's been put inside like the Instapot and just the lid squeeze shut. And so, um, you know, we're really kind of, I know in our, in my life, like in my personal life in my heart, mind and soul, and then also in our family kind of seeing where some of the fault lines were. You know, they were mm-hmm. pretty steady in mm-hmm. the real world, but you know, you put this much, much pressure on him. You go like, Oh, that, that wasn't quite as sturdy and connected wow. as I thought it was. That's really well said. Um, I didn't, I, I don't know. We, every time we do one of these, we don't know if we should be doing an intro or if we're just going to let the story speak for itself. But sure. um, to give people a little bit of context, we have a lot of people in our church who are big fans of yours. And then probably some people that have been living under a rock and don't even know <laughs> anything about your life. But you, um, is your husband is a pastor. Uh-huh. Well, he's, he, he's, he stepped down from being senior pastor at our church. We started a church here in Austin okay. 12 years ago. Okay. So he's not been the lead pastor now for, I guess, three years or maybe even okay. four at this point, but he's a starter. He okay. is a, he is a beginner. He's an entrepreneurial spirit. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and then you are, I mean, I guess your title is author, speaker, blogger. <laughs> You're just, a per- I don't know. It's, is that hard for you to even, what do you tell people? I know, right? It depends on who asks me. Like when I'm traveling and I'm on a plane and so it's like, what do you do? I high level it so hard. I'm like, I write. <laughs> and for who? I guess women. Like, I, I'm like, you don't, you don't want this. Okay. I don't even know how to describe my own job title. Um, because yeah, it's an interesting time, right? To be a communicator. It's all what started off in kind of one little zip code now has a lot of splinters. Um, and so, but yeah, that's, that's as good as any. I write <laughs> and I teach and I speak podcast. I don't know. Gosh. Well, our church, um, I like to think of, I mean, I, I think everybody probably thinks of their own crew as a group that's fun. But sure. I am a Enneagram seven, love fun. Uh, and so yeah. I just love your humor and your wit and your your writing style is fantastic. And Thank there's you. been numerous times where my wife has sent me like little sections. I I, I, <laughs> um, I have written a couple of books. Neither of them have done near as well as what your books have done. But she'll send me a little paragraph of something you've written. She'll be like, isn't this just so light and fun, but yet so meaningful and deep? And I'm like, I get it. Like, she's a better writer than me. Like, just say it. It does not hurt my feelings coming out in a couple of weeks, which we were laughing about that. What a great time to be releasing a book. But super. um, I do want to talk about um, just some of the more lighthearted, fun stuff up front, if we can. Um, Sure. Let me me just give you like some rapid fire questions. First thing you want to do when we're, when all the restrictions are lifted. Oh, 
Oh, okay. I am just, I feel like I need to put everybody on notice in my life. All my friends, my family, my whole family lives in Austin. Um, that I'm going to have zero sense of personal space when this is over. <laughs> it's going to be a, probably offensive. I think north of offensive, like full frontal, crushing, vice grip, body touching. Love like I, I can already tell that it's going to really, really almost border on assault. I'm Love not sorry. It. I'm just telling you in advance. Yeah. So all of Fauci's, Tony Fauci's warnings, like we might yeah. not be handshaking anymore. You're like, no, 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 no I'm not me. listening to that. I, That's I, right. Look, he's my leader right now, but <laughs> I'm prepared to like break ranks when it <laughs> comes to like hug time. That's awesome. All right. Um, what do you love most about the last couple of weeks? If you had to pick a, a thing or two that you're like, no, this part's been pretty awesome. Yeah, and say? there is some of that. And that's okay to say, too. It is okay to, and I also recognize that we're kind of in, our family's in sort of a privileged place because uh, Brandon, my husband and I, we already both worked from home. Mm. And so largely our kind of work life, it, with some very notable exceptions, kind of stayed intact. You know, we have the luxury of still getting to work safely from our homes. And so um, I do recognize that privilege for sure. But I I would say maybe this. Today is my oldest son's 22nd birthday. Mm. And, you know, he's the one that's graduating from college. He's a senior at Texas Tech. And I kind of thought, this is it. I've already, he's launched. You know, he's launching. He's going to finish his senior year. He's going to move into adulthood. So kind of having this time with my oldest kid that I just mm. never, ever thought I'd actually have again mm. um, has been great. He is, I love big kids. Listen, you just need to hang on, mister. Okay. You will not be in the weeds forever. <laughs> they will make sandwiches on their own. They will uh, drive cars and they will drive themselves to places. And so do they ever pick anyway, up their shoes? Oh, you know what? You might need to lay that expectation down. <laughs> that doesn't get much better. And I'm really sorry to tell you, nor do they put their cups in the dishwasher. So <laughs> totally. just try to be reasonable okay. right okay. now. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, but that's cool though. That time with him, yeah. even though, um, between the two, you said you have a high school senior and a college senior. Yeah. Is is one handling it better or worse than the other? Yes. My college senior is handling it better. So I don't know if you can remember your senior year, but my in high school, my high school senior um, had already given up any cares that he had. <laughs> um, he had what my husband and I essentially like to call the screw it. <laughs> okay, so he was just like, blah, blah. Screw just it. Dragging that kid over the finish line. Just finish. We don't care what you get. We don't mm -hmm. care what you do. And so this quarantine to him feels like, well, school is now totally optional. <laughs> and so you can imagine that we are really enjoying homeschooling that one. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh. Every day, Brandon and I will look at each other in the morning before the kids are sort of up and going. And we're like, which one of us feels like we have the emotional capacity to handle the senior? Like, which <laughs> one of us can do it today? Is it you? Like, do a body scan. Who can handle it today? Uh, we just need that kid to graduate. <laughs> I, I do. I totally get it. And I can uh -huh. so relate to that because I remember that feeling of a se being a senior when you're just like, yeah. I mean, I've already either gotten accepted or not. I mean, nothing's yep. going to change at this point. So, which is oh no, phoning it in, phoning it totally. in. Totally. Awesome. You know what? One of the things we've been wrestling through as a church is we've had, we've obviously had people in our church that have contracted the virus. But yeah. I think what's more, I don't want to say more heartbreaking because any there's so much that's heartbreaking now. But maybe just in a different way are the consequences or the implications of the isolation that it's had on so many yes. different people. Um, yeah. What are you learning about that? I mean, we, I know you are such a um, people oriented. I didn't know you're an introvert, but you, you just, mm -hmm. you seem like you fight for loving people really, really well, um, yeah. which of course we can do over video chat, but so much of that is that personal hand on the shoulder right. connection. What are you learning about, or what do you hope that the church learns or that we learn about, about relationships with each other uh, in regard to the way our minds are designed and the way our, the, our mental state is, um, is best. Mm. It feels like this um, pandemic and then the subsequent quarantine in so many ways. Now in other ways, completely not at all. And that's a different conversation, 
but in a lot of ways, it's kind of leveled the playing field because now um, people that we didn't understand or weren't in community with or disagreed with or had very different worldviews, we're all in the same spot right now. You know, mm-hmm. it is, we are all in our homes. We are all worried. We all have friends and family that we're concerned about. Um, we're all having to navigate a new normal. And so that sort of leveling out of the human experience right now, I think has the potential um, to really teach the church something important. If we'll mm-hmm. listen, mm-hmm. if we'll pay attention, um, I think if we will consider um, that all of the chasms and ideologies mm. that have kept us so incredibly polarized from one another, um, that have absolutely like put us all in our silos, um, it is possible now to experience a different world, mm. a different world where it's neighbor to neighbor, right? And it's person to person. And um, some of those distinctions that felt dire, I mean, just a month ago, honestly. Oh, yeah. It just feels impossible. Um, I think, I wonder if we could consider Mm -hmm. re-examining that maybe humanity can do better than we've done, that we Mm -hmm. can come together in a different way when this is all over, that we can lay down our arms um, and just reimagine what it looks like to be in community with one another. That's my, that's what I hope on my best day. That's you know, beautiful. it really is something to watch, isn't it? We're seeing it right now. It's everywhere. It's incredible. All these stories everywhere. They're just yeah. phenomenal. Just yeah. absolutely phenomenal. And I'm like, that's the best of who we can be. That's, that's, right. that's always been possible. Mm-hmm. That has always been possible. We could choose that on any given day in any given year. We could always choose to be that version of wow. ourselves. And so, man, I hope we hang on to that when this is all over. Um, that's, beautiful. that's my deepest prayer. Hey, um, coach us up as you're, I love that you started talking about um, your two kids, the senior in high school and senior in college. What do you say to somebody who's, uh, who's wrestling with a lot of loss right now? And and not, not what do you say to someone who might be, what do you say to anyone who, because all of us are, I mean, every single, you know, in my world, it's our seven year old, uh, our six year old Sally just turned seven. And she yeah. was crying herself to sleep the other night because she didn't have the birthday that she wanted, you know, because she just wanted totally. her friends to come over. That's all she of wanted. Course. And her pain is her pain. And it's just as real as anybody That's else's right. pain. But um, I feel at a loss at times as a parent. What do you yeah. say to people? What are you saying to your kids about loss right now? Hmm. I think a good um, place to start, like the foundation to build underneath that conversation um, is this, Mike. My girlfriend, Kristen Howerton says, this is not a good time to engage the hardship Olympics, right? Like (laughs) we are not competing with who's losing more, with whose pain means something more, with Mm -hmm. um, who gets to be the one saying this is hard and somebody else is going to get shamed for saying something different is hard. Mm -hmm. That just does not serve us right now. Mm -hmm. And so I I think we're going to have to give ourselves permission, first of all, to be able to say out loud, you know what? My kid turned seven and it sucked for her. Mm-hmm. And that was sad. And she cried herself to sleep. And that felt really bad to say that me- that matters. That counts. Mm-hmm. And we do, and you do. I mean, we have people in the hospital with mm-hmm. COVID, you know, mm-hmm. we've got, I mean, I feel like I can't throw a stone to anybody near me and mm-hmm. not find a host of people who've lost their jobs. Mm-hmm. So it's real, you know, mm-hmm. like, it's like loss upon loss upon loss upon loss. And so um, I would love to see us give one another all the permission in the world to experience the loss that we're experiencing and express it and without saying, I know others have it worse or, or without saying you shouldn't complain about that because somebody else is experiencing right. something harder. Right. That's just making us more fragmented. That mm-hmm. hurts. Like shame doesn't really have a good role right now to play inside this cultural moment. Um, and so I think that when, when somebody is saying something, the best thing is we can pull up a chair and go, that is hard. Mm. I see you and I like hear you. And I am so sorry how like disappointing or scary this moment is for you. Mm. That is healing. It always has been. Again, we could always be that person. We could always be choosing that version of ourselves. Um, but I think that has a real restorative power right now when um, everybody, as you mentioned, is experiencing yeah. loss and fear right now. Yeah. 
That's great. I mean, that it, it is amazing. It seems so simple to just pull up a chair and say, Hey, I get it. I know it's hard or yeah. I can't imagine, or I'm so sorry, yeah. but you're so right. It's so profound when people do that. And we probably need that more now than we've ever had. Uh, because totally. like you said, it's amazing how we've got all this good running on the rails and then we've got all this really hard running on the rails as well. Um, yeah. Let me just, maybe we could um, end with something. Um, if you were, if you were thinking about, you know, when you think about your own church, your own family, your own yeah. life, what do you, what do you hear God say right now? What do you think, you know, we, we've, we've been wrestling through all those questions of did God cause this or did God allow mm. this, which mm. in the end, it doesn't, the answer matters, but it doesn't really mm-hmm. matter for any of our emotional states today, but mm-hmm. he is trying to do something or he's trying to say something. Um, mm-hmm. What are you feeling? What are you hearing about what he is doing mm-hmm. or saying? Mm-hmm. I think for me, the sort of spiritual clarity that I'm experiencing is this sense of God right now, which is that he is the same right Mm -hmm. this minute as he was a month ago, as he was a year ago. He's just as near as he ever was. He cares about us just as much as he ever did. Our pain and loss matters to him as much as it ever did. He's not different right now Mm -hmm. than, than he ever has been, but when everything has the illusion of security, which we experience all the time, that's just sure. a, that's a luxury of privileged people to think that we are pretty much in control of most of the outcomes and we can sprinkle God onto the thing. Um, now that those are pretty much shattered and <laughs> we see how quickly they just go right through our fingers, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like in a week, like in a week, the world shut down. Um the, the notion that it's actually us who have built a lot of barriers between where we are and where God would, could, should be in our lives. Mm. Those are ours. Like we put those there. They're not real. They're just illusions, of course. Um, mm. The sense of control and success and privilege and power and, you know, all of this. But with those gone, it's interesting to imagine that God is just as gentle now as he ever was. And, um, and he's just as available to us now. He's, he's no further away and he's no closer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I hope for me that when we walk out of this moment into a different world, which is just true, it's not going to be the same as it was. Yes. Um, that I will be more aware of those layers that I have put around my own life, my own experience, my own family, my own sense of purpose and possibility, my own faith, and realize none of those were real to begin with. None of those carried any weight. They were. They did nothing to prevent any of this. They didn't insulate any one of us from this moment. Um, and that it's sort of just God is enough and he always was. Mm. Which you're right. I mean, that has always been true, but uh, it, it is, it's, um, we have to show ourselves grace back to what you were saying earlier that yeah. when all, when everything is kind of running as normal, you just don't have to stop and feel that. And absolutely not. We have had to for sure in this that's season. That's right. And that's I love right. And I think that's good for us. I yeah. do too. I think that's so good to say, Hey, this is, that's not a bad thing to stop and be really in tune and aware of how mm-hmm. dependent and broken and yeah. flawed and, virus prone as we are. I think that's that's great. Um, you, uh, I do want to point people to this. You're doing an event. I I saw this today on your website and I thought, um, um, I thought this is such a great idea, but on April 30th, you're doing a Uh web event. Um, Uh I can't, I can't talk about this without mentioning that Brene Brown is going to be a part of this. Brene Brown. She's doing all right. She's doing all right out (laughs) there in the world. Uh, I think a, she's gonna make yeah, it. She's got a new little yeah. podcast herself, which has been yeah. great. But um, it's the the book. It's about your your new book. The book title. Yeah. Where did that come from? Yeah. Well, you know, I tried to come up with a title that was incredibly hard to either say or remember, <laughs> and I can feel I like I second? really. Can I, can, I nailed it. can I try to say it? I would is love it, to hear your attempt. <laughs> yeah. Is it fierce, free, and full of fire? That's it. Look, you did it. It's possible. 
Tell us um, about that. Yeah. Yes. This is just the book of my heart. I don't know how else to describe it. It's, it's every single thing I have learned in my own march to absolute freedom, like wow. spiritual freedom, emotional wow. freedom, um, physical and intellectual freedom, everything I've learned in the last five years. Oh, I wow. wish somebody had put this book in my hands five years ago. Um, and so it comes out on April 21st and it's, just jammed with tools for women, just jammed to just to be integrated, what it means to like own mm. our convictions and our spiritual mm. questions mm. and our ideas and our thoughts and our needs and our wants and our identities. It's, it's pretty hardcore. Like it'll punch you in the face. Um, and so we had originally scheduled this big, amazing live event, um, mm. which is, of course, you know, gone by the wayside like everything else. And so we pivoted like we are all doing right now. That is the word over my team right now. Pivot. I was just going to say um, pivot is going to be like 2020's word of the year. Yeah, it is. It 100 percent is. So we went, well, you know what? Maybe this might bless the community in a weird way, because now you know, I, I reach out to my partner. So it's Brene Brown. It's Angela Johnson. She's the most hilarious comedian. Mm -hmm. um, Johnny Swim. I don't know if you know their music. Oh, just gosh, fantastic. They're going to yeah. do the music for us. Wow. And so um, I reached out to them and said, would you consider moving the thing online? Mm. And they, mm. of course, 100% said yes. So it's now going to be a webcast, which means way more people can come to it than All whoever was going to be in a live room. Atlanta, Seattle. I don't know where you are. You can come. And so we're excited to bring that. We're working really hard on putting together cool. a webcast that is going to make you laugh and give you hope and serve you exactly where you are and bring us together kind of in this moment in time. And I couldn't ask for a better partners. So you, they can get all that information over at jenhatmaker.com. That is awesome. Uh, Buckhead Church. I hope that you'll be a part of it. Uh, I know the Scroggins household will be there. We will definitely Yay. be tuning in. So thanks for, thanks for your time, Jen. Thanks for your influence in our church. Please yeah. keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, we you. need your voice. Uh, we need you and we need your spirit um, in the world right now. And you mm -hmm. bring such a great sense of hope and optimism and positivity and also just real life, um, real life talk. I feel like you're thank really you. good at that. What a well, nice thing you. to say, Clay. I really appreciate that today. Thanks for having me on. Yep. Thank you.